on the subject anointed and appointed for action. Number six, we are speaking to you in this series on the sentence that bridges the Gospels and the book of Acts. It reads thus, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after many infallible, by many infallible proofs. Isn't that great? Being seen of them 40 days and speaking to them of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, he came back 40 more days to really talk about this kingdom of God that everybody thought was off in eternity and there's going to get one to die. He came back to, to make it clear. No, it's now. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them, now this is going to be big business, so you're going to need something. So he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you've heard of me. Amen? Isn't that powerful? There are seven truths in that that spell miracle. M. You spell miracle, M-I-R-A-C-L-E, M, maturity, I, inspiration, R, response. I've spoken on these. A, for action, message number six today. Then we'll follow C, credibility, L, legality, and E, experience. <clears throat> you with me? Stressing today this verse, after he, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandment, to the apostles <clears throat> whom he had chosen. Apostles. Now, we see that word as very, very important, you know. We put a capital A on it and throw it in the context of the holy 12 set apart apostles, the lack, the lack of which there has never been before nor since. And that's not the idea. But after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandment to his followers whom he sent out, In other words, to he'd given commandment not to a system, but to people. Say, not to a system, not to system. But, to but to people like me. Like me. So come off of that holy 12. One of them had already uh, blown it anyway. So it was a holy 11 if, you had, if, you, if you're going to make them the holy ones. He gave commandment to the holy, to the apostles, little a, ordinary people, those that followed him, whom he had chosen, whom he had chosen, he had chosen. Don't forget the wrap-up in Mark. You remember? Verse 14, chapter 16. He appeared to the eleven. One of them had already gone, berserk. Upbraided them for their unbelief. Now we're talking about apostles whom he had chosen. And we throw that in this holy connotation, this super sacred framework which we so tend to do in religion, give all the good stuff to the holy few, to the holy cler clerics, to the holy clergy, and the holy people miss it. But not at IGC. 
and not where you are. He upbraided them. I'm talking about these people, apostles, whom he had chosen. Who are they? They are people whom he had just now recently upbraided for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Not holy twelve, sanctified, set apart forever when they died, miracles ended, and their names are on the foundations of heaven and nobody else. No, no, no. People like you and me whom he had just upbraided for their unbelief and hardness of heart. Well, now that kind of puts us in their rank, don't it? Because they believed not the women who had seen him after he was risen. We just well put the women in there. It says believe not them, but it was the women they didn't believe. Men still don't believe the women when they preach. <laughs> but they're believing them at IGC. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I heard a chorus of amens from the men there. <laughs> you bet. And he said to them, say them, yeah. people like me. People like me. He said to them, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about after that he, through the Holy Ghost, gave commandment to the kind of people that we are whom he had chosen. Not descendants of a special bloodline. These were renegades. That's a bad word. Fisher fellows. Tax collectors. Ordinary people. They are the ones he had chosen. Not descendants of a certain bloodline, of, of a certain hierarchy. No, but to plain, ordinary people like me, like you. Action. Up anointed and appointed for action. I've said before, let me say it again, we are not here to indoctrinate people to some, to, uh, to frame them in within a set of doctrinal uh, boundaries. We are here to help people experience Jesus and become an up person in a down world. What we have will heal the world. That's why Uganda weighs on Dr. Daisy, and that's why she'll meet the president and the first lady, because what we've got can heal the nation. It can heal countries, families, cities, people, Husbands, wives, hurting neighbors. That's what it's all about. In our last message, I emphasized that Christ came to introduce a new covenant that it would no longer be a system that would represent God on earth. Not the Levitical priesthood. Not the system of the old covenant. It would no longer be a religious system. Now it would be ordinary people who would represent him. So his coming was to teach ordinary people how to do that. Simple as that. Now read the Gospels with that in mind. And it'll, they'll be n new books to you. He came telling ordinary people, you now watch how I do it. And if you believe on me, you can do what I do. 
and what I do is represent my Father because he's in me. Watch me and copy me. I am the way. Don't look to the system anymore. It has failed. It has run its course. It hasn't worked. It's been abused. God has come out with his final idea that was his first idea. I want to be in people. I create people to be like me so that I can do my work through people. Paul saw it after wrestling for months, maybe years, we don't know. Paul grasped that down in the desert of Arabia for Paul, who knew all the scriptures, couldn't catch on because his knowledge of religion blinded him from his rapport with God. He couldn't see God touching people except through a system. But wrestling with the issue and praying over the issue and re searching the scriptures, Paul boiled it down to one line. He said, the bottom line is this, it, of all of my revelation, it's Christ in you. That's what gives hope to the world. There is a status, there is an esteem, there is a rapport, there is a relationship, there is a contact level available to anybody, and it'll come through Christ, and Jesus came to show us how, and now he lives in us. Jesus' ministry was to show people how God lives in human persons, not in a system. What I'm sharing with you, some of you, there might be some, I don't, I don't feel it, and I, I, I would think not, but there could be some that would say, Brother Osborne, this is message number six, and you're saying some of the same things again. I heard a pastor uh, I mean, I read a, a very wise pastor's article in Charisma the other day, and he emphasized anything that you want to tell a congregation, you must tell it the same at least four times. At least. To cover them all. Then tell it more if you want them to really get it. This church is birthed on the idea, behold the Son. Thirty-four times we preach consecutively. There's one thing I've learned in life. Repetition is the greatest art of communication. In America, we miss that value, and we go through life oft times with our minds in a muddle, no commitment, no decision, no solidity, because we live where there's a spectrum of options before us all the time. They dance before our eyes on TV. We're trained to only think little short thoughts, hear little short sentences, and they must be new or we'll turn them off. So we miss the good part in the gospel. And in the church, many times, we can become people who flit here and there and grasp little tidbits and live nothing. Never take the essence of, of the revelation of Jesus and assimilate it in us and become a Jesus person and go out dedicated to help people. That's what Chester has done. Here's a man who is retired formally, but he's working harder probably than he's worked in a long time because he has grasped the idea of Jesus at work in him, and he knows that they're dying all across the country with cancer and other incurable diseases. How can he sit down and read the newspaper and enjoy the fireplace when what he has would heal anybody if he can just get it in touch with them? 
Now Chester is no particularly special person. He is a man who has disciplined himself to say what he believes, to pronounce his words clearly, to speak good enough English to hold the attention of the hearer, and to speak with authority and assume the role that God has foreordained for him as a representative of Christ with full authority to go and save people, lift people, heal people, bless people, bring them to the light. It's as though he sat down with, and followed Jesus and heard Jesus say, just watch how I do it and imitate me. You can do it. That's what I came for. You can't go to a system any longer. They won't help you. Do like I do. God's changed his idea. God has fixed it now. He works in people. The system let him down. I don't like to say God changed his idea. That echoes back. God don't do that. God knows from the beginning. God has it put in force. His original idea, God has said, I'm tired of a system that's been abused and that's abused people because of people abusers. I want you to get the idea I will come in a person. I'm going to entrust my throne, my kingdom, my power, my name, my nature, my healing, my virtue, my love, my compassion. I'm going to entrust it all no longer in a system, but in individuals in totality. I'm going to give any one individual everything I am and everything heaven represents. I do it with the faith that if you, my son, will go show them how, some of them will catch the idea that they can do like you do and they'll be the saviors of the world. Now, those are different terms than you're used to hearing it, but I'm saying the same thing that you're used to hearing, but you're used to hearing it in the framework of common terms and verbiage and, 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 and vocabulary that, 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 that turns people off and I'm trying to say it in a fresh way so that it'll penetrate and you'll say, wow, now I understand what life is all about. Oh, I see. It's not religion. It's not a denomination. It's not an institution. It's not, it, it's not that. It's me and God and hurting people. I've got everything when I've got Christ. And he, Christ has trusted me enough that, that he just depends on me. He won't do anything unless he can do it through me because he has committed it to me. He's committed himself, his ministry, his love, his plan, his program to me, a person. Wow, I've been praying for him to do it. I thought he'd come in a cloud of glory and sweep over the city sometime. I didn't know. If I don't do it, he can't do it. If I don't go, he can't go. If I don't touch, he can't touch. If I don't care, he can't care. He, we are his touching agents. We are his communicators. We are his messengers. I started to say, I wrote it down. I'm glad I did, so I won't forget it. What I am sharing, some people say, you're saying the same thing over and over and over. If I am, thank God that I am. Thank God that you've got a pastor that'll say it again and say it again until it penetrates. Until it penetrates. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is, what I'm sharing is the greatest truth that we've given to our world in 40 years, 70 nations. Nation, we are nation changers. God is a nation changer, but he changes nations through people. He don't come in glorified clouds and change nations. He changes nations through truth, through truth. Truth is Jesus. 
Jesus is truth made flesh in us with a voice, with eyes, with hearts, with hands that care and communicate and tell. Go to Kenya today. Missionary Bud Sickler was here. Over 4,000 churches that one denomination has raised up since our 1956 crusade. You say you're going to take credit all for all that? No, we, we never do. But Bud always gives it to us. He always says, no, it was what you did. I said, no, Bud, it was your leadership. No, he says, you started it, and we kept the spark going. We kept the fire going. But the point is, what we taught the Kenyans, they caught on to, and the Kenyan preachers have gone everywhere believing they could cast out devils, they could heal the sick, they could raise the dead, they could cleanse the lepers, they could preach to a people, and the power of their preaching, if it was gospel, would change the city. And they've proven it, and they do it. Silas O'Weedy, look at him, a giant in God. They're all over the world like that. Go to Zaire. Look at Brother Adi Amin has raised up about four, uh, El Alexander, Aden. Yeah, he's got a lot of names. And, uh, that's right, he has got a lot of names. And some of them Kiswahili and some of them uh, Lu 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 Luganda. Uh, what, did I say Idi Amin? No, thank you. No, I didn't mean that. But this Alexander Aden has got... He's got, you ought to see his name, it's that long. A whole bunch of names, that's what, that's what I thought you were talking about. But anyway, over 4,000 churches in Zaire, he came to our meeting with a, a cattle whip and a blind woman from his village that they placed secretly and resolved him and his cohorts that if she wasn't healed, they would catch the preacher, beat him up and run him out of town. But of course, you know how God does. And the woman was healed, and that scared these Muslims, and they ran and hid. But the final story, they got right with God, accepted Jesus, were filled with the Holy Ghost, and we assisted Brother Alexander all over Kenya, and then he went to Zaire as a missionary, and since arriving there, over 4,000 churches. I have a newspaper from Zaire. It has three pages in it. The reporter followed Alexander in one of his crusades, and the reporter followed up the people that got healed in his meeting, and they filled three pages with little narrow columns about six columns per page, a little fine type, we've got it, all person after person after person after person that they followed up and reported they were healed. A man simply that seized the idea that Chester has seized, Jesus is in me, I can help people, and he went out and did it. It's all over the world like that. We went to Thailand in 55 or something, 53. There were less than a dozen spirit-filled people in the nation. Most of those were Scandinavian missionaries. But we, we started teaching and teaching and demonstrating. I'll never forget those meetings. We'd be there at 5.30 or 6 o'clock in the morning and teach till 8 or 9 o'clock. Those precious people would come in there so early. Oh, what eager people. If you've ever read the pictorial Christ in Siam, you see some of the pictures in the back of it. Most of those people that came out of that seminar, intense, Daisy and I laboring, teaching, sharing this simple stuff, they became preachers, evangelists, pastors, leaders, and today there's revival all over Thailand, great churches, Marvelous what God does. We are nation changers. What I'm telling you this morning at IGC, the point I'm emphasizing is the simple basic point that we've taken to the world and that's changed nations. Christ in you. Jesus is in you. What does Jesus look like here? He looks like you. He don't look like a Jew from Galilee. He looks like you. 
New Guinea, we told them, he looks like you. I tell you, that fired those New Guinea people. They never had heard anything like that. It changed them. They began to preach. They went places, so many of them. Now, look at, look at uh, Graham and Irene Baker, great missionaries there. Thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of people come to their conventions. Great churches all over Papua New Guinea. They got the idea. I'm telling you, it sprang out of that seminar in Garoka where we spent days and days and days showing them what Jesus in you can do, the same as he did when he was in Galilee. Sounds like this is a bragging sermon. No, that's not the point. If we're bragging, we're bragging on this truth. Christ in you, Jesus in us. We are anointed. We are appointed. Jesus said, hey, I've come with a new plan. Watch me how I do it. It's the new system. Glory to God. You're not going to have it where you ring the bells and burn the fires and offer the incense and do all the ceremonies. It won't be like that anymore. Watch me. Watch me. Do it like I do. He'd go out and sit down and teach. I'm sure when he left, they went out and sat down and teach. And he'd stand up and preach. I'm sure when he left, they stood up and preached. Paul did everywhere he could. I'm sure that it, Peter did. They watched him. He laid hands on the sick and healed them. He told the sick there was hope for them. He spoke kind to people. He loved everybody. He never turned anybody away. He gave everybody self-esteem and dignity. He believed in them. He said, watch me. Do it like I do it. But listen, I'm telling you, God wants Jesus came to show us. It's a new idea now. It's the original idea. God never quit believing in it. He believed if you'd follow me. He believed if, I could, if he could make people in his image, impart himself to them, they would trust him and he could do his work through them. Well, the first ones didn't. They betrayed him, but God never gave up. Jesus said, it's time for the idea to rebegin. Hallelujah. The system's worn out. Now God is coming. That's what we've told the world. I wish you could be with us. I wish you could have been with us in the tent in Lille, France. There, day after day after day, with that tent packed with eager gypsy preachers. You know, and many of them at that time considered the scum of the nation. Nobody in France wants the gypsies to come to town. Nobody wants them to form an encampment. And we went to them. Jesus came to show us a new way. I think I told you about the businessman. Grew up a Catholic, faithful, wanted to serve God, wanted to do his best. But in the Catholic Church, you know, this religion always finds some way to kind of put you down and keep you crawling. No pun on the Catholics, but it uh, just works that way. And so he finally got enough of it, and he said, I'm going to join the Protestants. He found a good Protestant church in a suburban area and joined them. He thought they sang prettier and seemed more of a lift. He got in there as beautiful. They had a beautiful church too. Catholic church was beautiful. This he thought was even prettier. He run with these people. They seemed a little freer. He run with them for a while. After a few months, he began to find out they were teaching the same thing as the Catholics. They are putting people down too. Just a different way, using different terms, different ceremonies. And he said, this is not going to get it. I feel the same heaviness and insecurity and put down that I felt with the Catholics. I thought the Protestants would be better, but he said, they're the same. But he said, I got an idea. I've heard about their inner city church down where there's hurting people. I'm going to go join them so I can do something for God. He went down there and joined them in the inner city. Run with them. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, they didn't have as nice of clothes. The church wasn't as nice. A lot of poor people coming in there and uh, contact a lot of people. But pretty soon he found out they was teaching the same thing. They was putting everybody down, running them down. You're not worthy. You're no good. You got to crawl. You got to cower. You're not worthy. You haven't prayed enough. You haven't read enough. You haven't believed enough. You haven't 
You haven't done this enough, done that enough. He got tired of that. He got fed up. He said, all I'm doing is just changing location. Looks like they all got the same doctrine. And he heard about the full, he, no, he heard about the Pentecostal, a charismatic church. Oh, and he heard them shouting. And he went, he said, I'm going to join them. I believe they've got something. And he went to them and shouted with them a while. And pretty soon, they all simmered down, and between the shouts, the preacher was preaching the same mean stuff. Browbeating everybody, scolding them for not fast enough, scolding them for not talking tongues enough, not interpreting enough, not reading enough, not going to church enough, all this stuff, and teaching them submission and all this stuff. And, and pretty soon he said, all I'm doing is just change the locations. And this was dogging him. Isn't it strange that God would bring a man through a spectrum of experiences like that? And finally, in desperation, he couldn't find anybody else to join. He couldn't find anybody that, that gave him any hope. You know what it is to be without hope? And he said one day, he said, I'm fed up with it. And he got his Bible, got in the car, drove to the country, parked along the road, headed to the woods, went back into the woods, found a big log, knelt down and opened his Bible and started praying and fasting and said, God, here's where I am and here's where I'm going to stay until you show me who I am. And he began to read and he began to listen and he began to find beautiful, beautiful verses. He found John 15, 16, I'm not, you've not chosen me. I've chosen you. Boy, what an uplift. Found where Jesus said, I'm the vine, you're one of the branches. Wow, hooked up with God. Me, he's telling me, I am made that's uh, what I preach on Wednesday night. I am made of the same thing. I ought to have told this story on Wednesday night. I, so I'll tell it again. I, <laughs> I am made of the same stuff Jesus is made. How can I put me down when I'm growing off of Jesus? I would be doing disgrace to him if I believe in him. I've got to believe in me. I'm the vine, the branch off of the vine. Oh, he kept reading. He found good things. He found where Jesus said, you are the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. You are, wow, me, the same thing Jesus is. And his life was changed. He discovered, he, he, he came out when he wrote his testimony. I read it in the full Gospel Businessmen's magazine. He said, I discovered Jesus never put anybody down except the religious system people who used their religion to put people down. Jesus always helped people up. And he said, I got the idea. I'm to do like he does. Since then, he said, I've been a messenger of good news. And wherever I go, I tell people what they can be in Christ. And it gives them hope. And my life has been fruitful. Friends, that's the message that I bring to you. I want to just say this. I was impressed this morning. I told Daisy uh, when we, we happened to hear Robert Schuller's uh, program and Tommy Lasorda uh, gave his testimony and uh, they had quite a talk. And I told Daisy while he was talking, I said, you know, honey, I'm having a revelation. I'm having a, an inspiration while he's been talking. And so uh, I told her, I said, now there's a man, Tommy Lasorda. Now, let's not make no saint out of him. Let's not make a saint out of him. He, he's, a, he's a coach, a professional man, and apparently uh, devoted to Jesus in, in whatever way he worships the Lord, and that's wonderful. So we'll leave that there. But, but my point is this. Tommy Lasorda has a ministry. He's in the ministry. Full-time ministry. We've got a thing among people today as we get the idea of ministry 
and of Jesus in us, and we have a thing that we say, yeah, Jesus in me. I'll go find me a pulpit and a crowd and be Jesus. Jesus didn't have a pulpit. He just had a dusty trail. He just lived among people. Once in a while, they let him speak. But uh, usually some demon would function, fuss around about it. But Jesus didn't have a pulpit. The greatest minister of the new covenant didn't have a pulpit. I don't say that to discourage anybody called to preach or to discourage anybody to do what I do. I don't like preachers to say, I'm the important one. You can't do like me. I don't believe that. I've made, uh, Daisy and I have talked people into being preachers all over the world by the gift of God working through us and going out to the world. That's not my point. My point is, in America, I think maybe we exaggerate that idea and everybody thinks, if I really follow Jesus, I must find a pulpit. Then I can have a ministry. Tommy Lasorda is a full-time minister. He's in the ministry. Who's his crowd? His team. The ones he works with. The ones that are employed on his team. Now, here's my point. Tommy Lasorda studies like a pastor or like a successful evangelist. You see, people go off half-cocked in life and wonder why they are not a successful minister and witness of Jesus. They never study, they never contemplate, they never prepare. Oh, you do that if you're going to preach publicly. You get notes, you, get, you read books, you get nice quotes, and you go stand before the people, and your ego is flattered while you read those things to people, and it gives you an air of importance. You wouldn't do that just for people. Why not? It depends on how much you believe in people. It only took one Alexander to raise up over 4,000 churches in Zaire. It only took one Jesus to change the world from a system to an individual. It only took one Paul to give to the church of Jesus Christ, Christians, for the centuries, the revelation of Jesus, redemption, him alive in us. Only took one to do that. It depends on how much you value one individual as to how much you will prepare yourself to help that one individual. My point is this. The system didn't work. This one does. God is ordained to work in people. If we are a people lifter, a people healer, a people saver, a people changer, we are in the business closest to the heart of God. We are determined, and that's why I'm staying on this subject. God is leading me on this subject to help you to find your role as a Christian witness and minister to hurting human people all around you. That is the message that's changed the world in our lifetime. That is the message that's put hundreds of thousands of believers into action around the world. I was talking about the gypsies in France. Today, the gypsies have built churches all over France, all over Spain. I'm not talking about a handful. I'm talking about hundreds of them. All over Portugal, they've gone into Germany. They are now, they have, I don't know how many hundred churches in India. The last report I had, they were in Brazil and Argentina, everywhere, gypsies, and it sprung out of that tent meeting where T.L. Osborne had the patience and the stuff to day after day labor and preach 
and teach this idea in essence. We are Jesus in the flesh today, and he is depending on us, and we can save the world if we'll put ourselves in contact with the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> we can change Tulsa. We can save Tulsa. We can bless Tulsa. We're going to do it. We're getting the idea. It's seed in us. It's going to grow out of us. I felt I was really a prophet when I spoke with great authority in the early days of my ministry. And I said, with great profundity, the day will come when plumbers and carpenters will heal the sick and cast out devils. And the people were stunned that I said it. Old stuff now. No longer unique. Hallelujah. What a wonderful day we have. But we still got it pretty well tied to the sanctuary. But we're going to break out of our walls. We're going to get to reading that book that I wrote outside the sanctuary. And we're going to find there is where the ministry is. This, I don't know what you call this. I wouldn't brag on this very much. Haranguing people. Well, we do it nice. I know it's constructive, pretty good. It's our fashion of doing it, but it doesn't, 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 doesn't count for much. What counts is you and a hurting person coming to God and you bringing all that Jesus died to provide to that person and giving them life. And God smiles and says, there's another one just like me. You can't beat that. You can't beat that. When you get somebody close to him, they become just like him. And he loves them with all their faults and with all their shortcomings so we don't have to check up on them and trim them down to size. God's good at that. But we have to expose them and bring them and show them their options so that they can exhibit this Jesus in everyday lifestyle. That's where he shines brightest. May God bless you that's watched by video today. May God take this message and burn it in you until you say, wow, that's for me. I'm sure God has spoken to you. And he said, do you see? That's all I'm talking about. I just want to live in you. And then you can take me to people. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. I love you, he says. I believe in you. I trust you. Go in my name. Lo, I am with you always. Will you do it? And if you're sick, would your sickness stay when Jesus comes to live at your house? No. In your heart, let a great no rise up to your disabilities, your weaknesses? No, not now, not since I've discovered who I am. No to the devil, yes to Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray his blessing upon you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Go for it, baby. Hallelujah.